the view from the mountain. There's a story to be told. In the crashing of the ocean, there's a power that no man will ever hold. All the stars in the heavens decorate your handiwork. And like a mighty choir, they've come to celebrate your word. Well, good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. It's good to see you all. Like Mike last week had you all displayed out here in front of him at his desk. I'm seeing you all right up here this morning, picturing you there in your normal places. So, it's good to see you. In a moment, I will explain to you my revamped Grover Studio One. I'm here at my desk in my home. Uh, I'll explain the sign here in a minute. Today, I want to do something positive. I want us to hear some good stories. I want to bring a smile to your face. I want us to all feel good. We're going to hear some good music. We're going to hear my favorite scriptures. This all started two weeks ago when Jim Gallman had us on the road with Steve Hartman and had some great stories. Just this morning, I Googled Steve Hartman and was looking at some of his episodes with his two children. His young daughter, probably six years old, was helping him with a Kindness 101 lesson. She had a message about courage. She had a message about optimism. Loved it. Last week, Mike McLeland had us Anxious About Nothing with Max Licato, Trusting in Our God. This week, Mike invited everyone to an online Bible study and book study of Max Licato's You'll Get Through This. And our own David Smith has been coming out with his almost daily One More Thing. Some fun things for us to do, to see, to listen to. I will tell you that obviously David was very good at his job at Procter and Gamble. And I now think King David should be known as King TP. Think about it, you'll get it. Before we get into some good stories, I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you that I know this past six, seven, eight weeks has been very difficult. And it's been harder on some than on others. I know there's a lot of people contracting this coronavirus. There's a lot of people dying from this. And just in our own class, I know several of you have had to put off surgeries. You're in constant pain. You have not been able to leave your apartment. You've missed getting to see your family. Mike mentioned last week about graduations missed. And yet, we have much to be thankful for and much for which we should express our gratitude. I'm going to look at a Daily Guidepost story by Debbie McComber 
that kind of put things in perspective for me a little bit. Let me share this with you. Blessed are the merciful, for they will always be shown mercy. I had the privilege of traveling, traveling to Lebanon and Jordan with a team from World Vision to visit Sir Syrian refugee camps. Viewing life inside these camps was an eye-opening experience. The poverty, the hopelessness, the inability to dream everywhere. Refugees are the least wanted people in the world, and lack of welcome in these host countries has worn them down especially the children. And those who had fled to escape death and torture don't want to stay in these countries. Their biggest desire is to go back home. Seeing their plight firsthand had a strong impact on me. Meeting them face to face and hearing their stories tugged at my heart. The highlight of the trip was bringing the knitted items many of you had contributed to the World Vision's Knit for Kids program an initiative that originated at Guidepost. And how I wish all of you who furiously knitted and crocheted to bring warmth and love to these precious ones could have seen the happiness that lit up their faces as we handed out the sweaters, hats, mittens, and blankets. They squealed with delight to have something special just for them. Knitting seems like such a little thing to us, but to these children, it was loving out loud. Father, bless each of these children. Give them hope, a future. Heal our broken world so they can return to where they long to be. I cannot imagine having to leave my country having to go and live in a refugee camp somewhere. Shortage of food, shortage of health services, nothing to bring happiness to your life unless someone brings you some knitted mittens or sweater. From 1 Thessalonians, be joyful always, pray continually, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Okay, several weeks ago, someone brought to my attention John Krasinski's Some Good News feature on YouTube. He's been doing one a week. There's now five episodes out there. Behind him, when he's bringing the good news, is a sign that his daughter painted, similar to this one. It has SGN on it, some good news. I reached out to my three granddaughters, day before yesterday, to make me a sign. Grover's good news. One of them suggested that maybe that should be God's good news, and goodness, kind of put me in my place. So we may call this God's good news. John Krasinski, if you don't know him, he played Jack Ryan in a made-for-television series. He started as Jim in The Office. He wondered out loud in the first episode why there was not a news station dedicated to just good news, just things that are happening that are positive in the world, especially at this time. So he's doing a news broadcast for some good news. And here are some of the stories that he had on his uh, episodes that I have watched. He talked about the heroism of the medical health care community who are putting their own lives and health on the line to help people who have this coronavirus. He had a sign, a, a man with a sign showing through a window of a hospital to the staff where he was thanking the staff on this sign were the words, thank you for saving my wife's life. 
In Ireland, a grandfather met his first grandchild through the window of their home. And this little video series showed three generations, the grandfather, the father, and the new baby boy meeting each other for the first time through a window. The one that really got to me, a man whose wife was in a memory care unit suffering from Alzheimer's. He went by to see her every day. When they closed the facility, like many have done, and he couldn't go and visit his wife, he still went to the memory care unit, had one of the staff open a window, and this won't surprise you if you've dealt with anyone with dementia or, or Alzheimer's, music stays with them. They can still remember the words to songs. And so the man going to visit his wife, he began to sing Amazing Grace. And immediately his wife in her bed inside the room joined in with him and they sang the whole first verse of Amazing Grace, and she never missed a beat, although she might could not tell you who he was. But he was still coming to care for her and to visit her. He had a story of a 15-year-old young lady, beautiful young lady, had lost all her hair. She was coming home after her final chemo treatment, and the street where she lived was lined with her friends, her family, cars, balloons, signs, all wel welcoming her home. Mailman Kyle, delivering mail to his 400 mail customers, printed a sign, put it in every one of their mailboxes, that he was available if they needed any help getting some of the essentials of life. And he said he had not imagined the response he got would get. Said probably almost all 400 had reached out to him for help, and he had done that. Companies converting their production lines to making PPE, personal protection equipment. A good story. Most of the humane animal shelters, uh, the dog kennels, empty. People coming and adopting the dogs and the cats. John Krasinski threw a prom for the high school seniors for this year, the class of 2020. Lots of videos of young ladies in their prom dresses, young men in their suits, having a virtual prom, dancing with their father, dancing with their mother, or one of their siblings, being entertained by the Jonas Brothers, Billy Ellish, and a, a, a very famous DJ. They had a full prom thrown by John Krasinski. This morning I was looking on my computer at the uh, headlines that were flashing across the screen, and there was the story of a teacher, I think she was in Omaha, who had seen John Krasinski some good news, and she gave an assignment to her students to look for all the good that's going on out there around them. She asked them to make their own signs, record their own video, and to share that with her. And she would put out a, a large video with all of the good news. There's still good out there. There's still people doing wonderful things. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your rod and the, your staff, they comfort me. 
You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Jim Dennison writes the Dennison Forum. He is sharing some of God's good news, things that are going on in the world. He said it is wonderful to see the entire world working together against this pandemic to come up with vaccines, with treatments. He had just participated in a Houston area teleconference of religious leaders of some of the larger churches in there and some of the smaller churches. And one of the things that had come from this teleconference was that the small churches, much like Custer Road 40 years ago, could no longer meet in schools that were closed and that the larger churches were figuring out ways to open up their facilities to these smaller churches to hold their services. Dennison commented that he felt certain Jesus was smiling over that one. He talked about the Pulse Evangelization Movement led by Nick Hall specifically reaching out to millennials, that they've been holding a Bible quarantine series on Fox Nation, that they, they held a Good Friday service where guest appearances by Max Licato, Lauren Daigle, Michael W. Smith, Tony Dungy, had resulted in over this six or eight week series, over 117,000 people coming to confess their faith in Christ. From Romans, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. My good friend Tom Wakefield, he's almost as good as our David Smith, King TP, and sends me emails daily. He shared one with me about what I've learned, a series that was written by Andy Rooney, a man who used to be on CBS's 60 Minutes TV series, a man who had the gift of saying so much in a very few words. I've learned that one should keep his words both soft and tender because tomorrow he may have to eat them. I've learned that a smile is a very inexpensive way to improve your looks. This one's for David. I've learned that life is like a roll of toilet paper. The closer it gets to the end, the faster it goes. I've learned that those small daily happenings that make life so spectacular. I've learned that everyone wants to live on top of the mountain but all the happiness and growth occurs while you're climbing it. I've learned that being kind is more important than being right. Which brings me to this little Facebook post by one of our own, Miss Lynn Jorgensen, who talks about being kind. I'll share this with you in case you have missed it. As governors are trying to figure out how to ease back into the normal, the new normal, please remember, some people don't agree with the state opening. That's okay. Be kind. Some people are still planning to stay home. That's okay. Be kind. Some are sighing with relief to go back to work knowing that they may not lose their business or their homes. 
That's okay. Be kind. Some are thankful that they can finally have a surgery they've been having to put off. Some will be able to attend interviews after weeks without a job. Some will wear their mask for weeks to come. All of that's okay. Be kind. The point is everyone has different viewpoints and feelings, and that's all okay. We each have a different story. If you need to stay home, stay home, but be kind. If you need to go out, just respect others' space when in public and be kind. Don't judge your fellow man because you're not in their story. We are all in different mental states than we were months ago. So just remember, be kind. From Philippians, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Let me tell you about some things that Amaret and I have done. I see the people mowing our yard out there at the back, in case you hear that. Uh, you can't plan for everything. I did silence the grandfather clock. I didn't silence the lawnmower. Here's some things Amaret and I have done this week to just have fun, to bring a smile to our face and to others. A couple of weeks ago, we celebrated our daughter Chrissy's 50th birthday. Chrissy is pretty much staying in isolation because of some underlying health issues, some autoimmune issues. But we went over to her apartment. Amaret had baked her a birthday cake with candles. We met her over at the park. We each brought our own utensils and her son Connor joined us and we all had a birthday party, the four of us in the park. We sang happy birthday to Chrissy on her 50th birthday and then we all went for a walk. It was a delightful day. Not long ago, another thing Amaret and I did, we invited our good friends who we used to be their next door neighbors, Larry and Peggy. They have been to our Sunday school class years ago. They came over, drove their own vehicle, followed us out north of McKinney to the Horn Cemetery. The Horn Cemetery is, has a family tie. Amaret's mother's maiden name was Horn. Her great, great grandfather, the elder R.C. Horn helped establish this Horn Cemetery up north of McKinney. We went there. Amaret had a key to the lock. We unlocked the gate, drove up to the cemetery. We all took in our folding chairs, uh, a blanket, some cheese and crackers, and a beverage of choice. We had a great time there in the Horn Cemetery, listening to the birds and visiting. And every once in a while, Amaret would comment, oh, did you hear that noise? I'm pretty sure that was one of my relatives rolling over, over there. They were teetotalers. They could not believe we're there in the Horn Cemetery having a glass of wine. And Ammo and many of you sweet ladies in the class have been making masks to give away. How wonderful. I mentioned my granddaughters earlier that made this sign. Grover's good news. God's good news. Lily, Emma, Piper, they live up in Anna. Um, I need to set the stage just a little bit for what they did here. Uh, they live on 17 acres. They have a barn that has a little small living quarters in it. It has a, um, a upstairs bedroom and bath, a downstairs kitchen. They went over to the kitchen and they cooked dinner 
and invited Shannon Ann to come to their restaurant for their date night. They had a table set up there in the barn with tablecloth, flowers, a candle. They served them homemade pizza, salad. After dinner, they told them that, uh, to go on back to the house and watch a movie, that they were gonna stay out there in the barn, clean up the kitchen, and then put everything away. Shannon said it was one of the most wonderful date nights that they had had. He said everything about it was perfect, uh, except when he got the bill at the end of their meal. He said this is probably one of the most expensive date nights that he had ever had, but he was delighted to pay it. Doing something fun, bringing a smile to your face. Remember, no matter how bad it might get out there, there is still a lot of good. There is tremendous power in the human spirit. From Philippians, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about those things. So this week, I am hoping we will all do some things to stay positive, to bring a smile to our face, get out and walk, work puzzles, watch a fun movie. Night before last, Amaret and I watched Mary Poppins Returns. It stars Emily Blunt. Emily Blunt, it just so happens, who plays Mary Poppins, is John Krasinski's wife, and she's appeared in some of his good news video clips. Call your family, call your friends, tell them you miss them, give them a hug over the phone. They'll love it and it'll bring a smile to your face. If you'll bow your heads, we'll close with a prayer. Dear God, we thank you for being our God. We thank you for all the blessings, for your mercy, for your love. Help us to remember to be joyful always, to pray continually, and to give you thanks in all circumstances. We know you are right beside us every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to end with another little music. I wish you all a wonderful week. I'll be back with you again in two or three weeks, and I hope you have a smile on your face. In the eye of the storm, take care. You remain in control. I love you all. And in the middle of the war, you guard my soul. You alone are the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me. In the eyes of the Lord. When the solid ground is falling down from underneath my feet, between the black skies and my red eyes, I can barely see. When I realize I've been sold out by my friends and my family, I can feel the rain. In the eye of the storm, you remain in control. In the middle of the war, you guard my soul. You alone are the anchor, and my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm.